hey, so let's go ahead and work through this particular problem. Um, you know, you, you ask in the post about uh, uh, negating the dimension. One and three, since they have an X variable, uh, that would actually probably be the easiest place to start. Uh, you can work with all three of them at the same time, but that often doesn't uh, isn't as helpful. Okay, uh, but but theoretically you can. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to use the uh, Gauss Jordan elimination stuff. Uh, so. So zero, five, negative one, three, and I didn't need that equal sign there. Three, negative four, negative five, negative 11. Okay. Um, and the only reason I'm gonna go do this the long way and kind of do it by hand is just to go through all the steps. Uh, you can, uh, most graphing calculators will do the row reducing. If you were on a TI-84, uh, you can go in and enter this uh, matrix in and then go select the R, R, E, F. And I think that's in like the the number menu or the math menu. Uh, no, it's in the matrix thing. Um, anyway, I don't have my calculator handy, so I can't really look, but it is in there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, hold on a second and I'll grab it just so I can show you all how to use some technology as well. Download a, an emulator uh, so you can see on the screen. Uh, so this is a TI Smart View. Okay, and this, no, stop that. So on the TI calculators, if you go to uh, second and the X inverse where it says matrix, okay, arrow over to edit and hit enter. Down at the very bottom, you can kind of barely see it on the recording screen. And this is a, a what, three by four. So three, enter four. Okay. And then just type in two, negative two. Just type in your matrix. Negative three, six, zero, five, one. Eleven. Okay. Now, I always just quick go back to the home screen, and that was matrix A. And so, if we go back to the matrix menu, and we go to the math part of it, scroll down till you find R R E F. Oh, I went too far. Oh, one too many clicks there, huh? You have to go back and check the, the on the names. This was matrix A, so I'm just going to hit enter. Close my parentheses and enter, and it gives me the row reduced version of it. Now, if I want the fractions, all I got to do is hit math and then enter where it has that little arrow with the frac. And then hit enter one more time, and it'll show up with the fractions involved. Okay, so I'm just going to move that so I can right now. So using the calculator, uh, when I row reduce that, I get one zero zero fifty five over seven zero one zero forty three over seven zero one four over seven. Okay. And of course, that gives me my solution then. So that's really nice and handy. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so there aren't infinitely many solutions. And if you just add them up, uh, like you were suggesting, then the, the problem is you're not actually eliminating anything to kind of pare stuff down a little bit. Okay. Um, I, I would do the... the Gauss Jordan elimination stuff on this, um, <clears throat> uh, but you certainly could uh, start doing that, like you said, with the uh, first and third rows, and I could take three times row one uh, minus two times row three, 
Okay. Um, or let me write that in, in a different way because I'm okay. just going to take 2 times row 3 minus 3 times row 1. Okay. And if I do that, okay. I'm leaving row 1 alone. That's going to be a 0 there. Okay. Now, uh, let's see, 2 times, that would be negative, uh, 2 times negative 4, uh, minus 3 times negative 2, getting up to negative 2, and then 3 to 5, minus negative 1, And negative 40. Now what this means uh, on this set, we actually then have actually narrowed these two down to these two equations okay? and we could do that because that would leave me with 5y minus z equals 3, negative 2y minus z equals negative 40, and then I could just either continue using the matrices to do that or I could switch back to, to doing these because if I subtract these two equations that'll give me 7y and that's a 0z and that would be 43 so y is going to be 43 over 7 and you'll see that actually matches with what we got for y up here when we did the Gauss-Jordan elimination with a calculator okay and once you have that then you can back up see and this is the Gaussian elimination you could back up and say, okay, well, if y is equal to that, then 5 times 43 over 7 minus z equals 3, and then solve that for z. 5 times 43 over 7 minus 3, and then z is going to be uh, 94 over 7, which matches exactly what we got in the equation up there. And then from those two, we back up to uh, this equation up here okay, and say, okay, well, 2x okay, minus 2 times y minus 3z equals 6 minus 3 times z equals 6. And then we solve that for x. Okay, z That's going to be 2x equals 7, 10 over 7. I that in half, so that'd be 355. So you see we get the same things. So you can eliminate the, the x dimension right off the bat by uh, manipulating rows 1 and 2 and coming up with two new equations, uh, and a new equation, and then combine that with uh, the second equation. So that way you're down to y and z, and then eliminate one of the variables from that. Okay. Um, so you could uh, do that, but you don't want to try them all in one step uh, because that just gives you one new equation with all three variables still involved, so it doesn't give you any new information. Okay, So it's not wrong to do that, it's just not helpful. Okay. I hope that makes sense.